The first 10 amendments to the Constitution are called the Bill of Rights. They were written to ensure that the fundamental rights of all Americans would be protected. The Seventh Amendment guarantees a trial before a jury in federal civil cases. A civil case is a legal dispute between two parties. The parties can be people, organizations, businesses, or the government. Civil suits usually look for some monetary compensation. One party sues the other for a certain amount of money. Criminal cases, unlike civil cases, are between the government and someone who has broken the law. Criminal suits usually end with a punishment, like a prison term, community service, probation, or a fine. Jury trials in criminal cases are guaranteed by Article 3 of the Constitution. The Seventh Amendment only applies to civil cases tried in federal courts. Each state has its own court system to deal with disputes on a state level. It is interesting to note that one part of the Seventh Amendment has changed since the Bill of Rights was ratified. That is the part that says the right to trial by jury applies when the value in controversy shall exceed $20. In 1791, $20 was a lot of money. Today, the qualifying amount is $75,000. The Eighth Amendment of the Bill of Rights states, Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Bail is money paid by a person accused of a crime that allows that person to be released from jail until the time of their trial. The theory behind allowing bail is that the accused person will appear in court for the trial because if they do not, then they will lose the bail money. It also acknowledges the concept that people accused of crimes are innocent until proven guilty, and therefore should not be kept in jail without being convicted. However, if a judge decides that the person accused of a crime will either not appear at the trial, that's called being a flight risk, or might do harm to others if not kept behind bars, then bail can be denied, and the person will remain in jail until the time of trial. By saying that bail should not be excessive, the Eighth Amendment attempts to ensure that the amount that has to be paid will not be so great that only the richest people would be able to pay it. The same applies to the stipulation that fines imposed by the government not be excessive. The most widely known and controversial part of the Eighth Amendment is the prohibition against cruel and unusual punishments. What constitutes cruel and unusual punishment has been debated since the Bill of Rights was adopted, and the definition has changed over the years. What is cruel and unusual today was not necessarily considered cruel and unusual at other times. The major point of debate is capital punishment, the death penalty, which can be imposed for espionage, treason, and murder under a variety of circumstances. Various cases concerning capital punishment have been heard by the Supreme Court, which has ruled that the death penalty is not cruel or unusual, as long as it is conducted according to certain guidelines. For example, the guilty person must be mentally competent and over the age of 18, and the court has said that there must be two jury hearings in capital cases, one to determine guilt or innocence, and one to determine the sentence for a defendant found guilty. The Eighth Amendment prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment doesn't only apply to sentences imposed on the guilty. It also applies to the way prisoners are treated. For example, the use of solitary confinement, protections for the health and safety of prisoners, and the physical conditions of prisons. What constitutes cruel and unusual punishment is an issue that continues to be debated and discussed, and will most likely continue to change, as it has, over time.